Welcome Age of Vintage Society. Upon moving to Hollywood from Sweden, Greta Garbo became one of the most beautiful and exciting movie stars of the 1920s and 30s. She was best known for portraying heroines who were strong-willed and mysterious, much like the actress herself. Why did Greta Garbo have social anxiety and a fear of crowds? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The Exquisite Greta Garbo At one time Greta Garbo was the biggest actress in the world. Everyone knew who she was and was fascinated by her. Now, people still talk about Catherine Hepburn or Carol Lombard or Betty Davis, but when was the last time you watched a Garbo movie or talked to friends about her? Probably never. Garbo has just sort of disappeared from our consciousness. In the male-oriented studio system, Greta Garbo wielded a power no other actress has ever possessed, before or since. Be it producer, director, lover or journalist, Garbo called the shots, and when she decided that she was done with the whirlwind of life as Hollywood's darling, she withdrew completely, leaving her public begging for an encore that never came. Though there have been numerous biographies of Garbo, they never fully know the two so-called missing periods in the life of this most enigmatic of Hollywood stars. The first during the late 1920s, forcing MGM to employ a look-alike to conceal what was almost certainly a pregnancy. The second during World War II when Garbo was employed by British intelligence to track down German sympathisers. Born in Sweden on September 18, 1905, Greta Lovisa Gustafsson lived in poverty with her parents and two older siblings. She was one of the most glamorous and popular motion picture stars of the 1920s and 30s. She was best known for her portrayals of strong-willed heroines, most of them as compellingly enigmatic as Garbo herself. The daughter of an itinerant labourer, Greta Gustafsson was reared in poverty in a Stockholm slum. When she was 14, her father, an unskilled worker, died, and she started working in a barber shop and a department store. In 1924, after getting a scholarship to study acting at the Royal Dramatic Theatre, she starred in a silent film called The Saga of Gosta Berling. While attending the training school, she chose her stage name and worked to develop her voice. Her studies at the Academy served as both the foundation for her acting career and a source of several lifelong friendships with other actors and artists. Within a year, one of Sweden's foremost film directors, Moritz Stiller, recognised Garbo's unique beauty and immense talent. Following the advice of the director, she changed her last name to Garbo, and in 1925 he secured her a contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer in Hollywood. At first, MGM chief Louis B. Mayer was sceptical at Garbo's talent, but he and all studio executives were impressed by the initial rushes of her first American film, The Torrent. Garbo projected a luminous quality that was perfect for silent pictures, motivating Mayer to sign her to an exclusive contract and raise her salary even before she completed work on this film. Throughout the remainder of the decade, Garbo appeared in such popular romantic dramas. She often co-starred with John Gilbert, with whom she was romantically involved off-screen. Garbo's success during this stage of her career was based not only on her mysterious ethereal screen persona, but also on public interest in the Garbo-Gilbert affair. Garbo was soon cast in the leading role of Joyless Street, the definitive masterpiece of German realistic cinema, directed by G. W. Pabst. The film received international acclaim, for its depth of feeling and technical innovations. The film and Garbo's performance were a critical success, shattering box office records. For MGM, Garbo was the studio's biggest asset. Her first three films amounted to 13% of the company's profits from 1925 to 26. 
Garbo, ever mindful of the financial difficulties she'd grown up with, knew she had leverage. After a contract dispute with MGM, Garbo, who'd threatened to return to Sweden, landed a new contract that paid her a record $270,000 per movie and gave her unprecedented control over her roles and the films she starred in. In many ways, Garbo represented a new kind of Hollywood actress, one whose vulnerabilities, sexuality, passion and mystery swirled together to entice both male and female audiences. Additionally, her style changed the course of American fashion, while her reclusive nature only fueled the public's fascination with her. Greta refused to sign autographs, answer fan mail, and rarely gave interviews. She never appeared at award ceremonies or premieres. Some thought this was done on purpose to gain a mysterious image, but this was not the case. She was a shy, introvert, and shunned publicity all of her life. The studio eventually decided they could capitalize on this and subsequently created the image of the woman of mystery. Thirties star Greta Garbo had social anxiety and a fear of crowds, but was not a reclusive figure. Greta Garbo famously declared, I want to be alone, in the 1932 film Grand Hotel. The screen siren was far from a recluse when cameras stopped rolling. I was surprised to find that Garbo was not really the reclusive figure that everybody assumes that she is. She was actually quite friendly, she enjoyed the company of people, and she was not the sort of caricature Sunset Boulevard figure who wanted to be alone all the time. She was actually quite social. While the 30s star developed a reputation for being Hollywood's most famous hermit, she actually wasn't alone. In fact, Garbo shared a decades-long friendship with actress-turned-screenwriter Salka Viertel the mastermind behind many of the star's screenplays. But the Galician native was more than just a gal pal to the actress. During the 1930s, Viertel tirelessly worked to help European artists and intellectuals for a better life in California. Salka, all through Garbo's career, served as an acting coach, especially in the movie Camille. They had an instant and electric connection. They genuinely loved each other and Viertel helped Garbo shine. Greta Garbo had social anxiety and a fear of crowds. At the same time, she was the most popular celebrity Hollywood had ever seen, at the time. So it was a perfect storm of discomfort for her. Salka was a person who was very comfortable with all kinds of people, and she was able to be a little bit of a buffer between Garbo and these large crowds that she might have had some trepidation about. Salka had loyalty and diplomacy and was able to deal with the studio in a way that Garbo might not have felt as comfortable as doing herself. Garbo, on the other hand, had power and prestige and celebrity and was able to make Salka's screenwriting career possible in Hollywood. Garbo would come sometimes to Salka's Sunday afternoon parties, although she preferred not to. She would rather have more quiet one-on-one -on -one with people, but she enjoyed the company. The women's close relationship has since sparked rumours of a love affair. There isn't a shred of evidence either way, and we will never know. It was said that Marlena Dietrich was brought to the United States by Hollywood to compete with the popular Greta. People constantly compared the two during their respective careers. Greta did not mind, but it reportedly annoyed Marlena very much. Greta Garbo and Marlena Dietrich, did they have an affair? Garbo and Dietrich had an estranged relationship with each other. Reportedly, the two of them met in 1945 at a party hosted by actor Clifton Webb and were both introduced to each other by Orson Welles. The encounter was odd. Marlena attempted to flatter Greta, telling her she was a goddess, but Garbo could hardly bring herself to say, thank you, following her rule never to return a compliment. At the end of the party, Marlena reportedly said, her feet aren't as big as they say. However, it turned out there is more behind this awkward interaction. The two European actresses most certainly met for the first time while in Europe, before either arrived in Hollywood. 
They both worked on a silent movie entitled The Joyless Street. Garbo was aged 19 at that point, and Dietrich was already noted for her bisexual and promiscuous life back in Berlin. Moreover, Dietrich denied ever taking part in this silent movie throughout most of her career. According to author and film historian Diana McClellan, Dietrich really appears in several key scenes of the film. Suddenly my heart jumped. I stiffened. I stopped the film, then rolled it back. I rolled it again and again and again. Over the past several months, I had examined, very closely, scores of photographs of Marlena in Berlin and Vienna in the 1920s. There was no question at all in my mind that the woman I was watching in several key scenes was Marlena Dietrich, stated McLellan. McLellan's research on the silent film footage and related materials further suggests the two of them got into a love affair at that point. Garbo supposedly fell in love with Dietrich. However, Dietrich never intended to maintain such a relationship, which would have affected the young Garbo significantly. Garbo and Dietrich always denied knowing each other, known as they were to be cinematic rivals. Yet there is evidence that suggests otherwise. In 1925 the two struck up a rumoured affair, with Dietrich describing Garbo's anatomy in vivid detail, remarking that the Swedish actress also wore dirty underwear. We can only guess at the details of what happened between the two of them. However, what we are left with is their immaculate films from this golden period, towering achievements of staging, cinematography, writing, and featuring some of the finest acting ever committed to celluloid by two strong, independent women who have since become unquestionable legends of the silver screen. After making her final film in 1947, Greta Garbo retired to an apartment in New York City and lived in seclusion until she died. She gave no interviews and made no public appearances, living a reclusive life away from her fans. She died on the 15th of April 1990. She left her fortune to her niece. In 1960, Garbo was given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1983, she was made a commander of the Swedish Order of the Polar Star. Greta Garbo's legacy will be as one of the actors who successfully crossed over from the silent film era to sound. Her later reclusiveness was as legendary as her beauty. Up until the end, she demanded to be left alone. The Sverige Riksbank decided in 2011 to feature Greta Garbo on the 100 kroner Swedish banknote. Greta was not a big spender and invested her money wisely. Although she had not worked for a long time, she was worth millions when she passed away. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the unique life and legacy of Greta Garbo? There is no doubt that she was the woman of mystery. 